This video is sponsored by Surfshark. More on them later. Hey, did you know that I stream on Twitch sometimes? Yeah, I don't have much of a consistent schedule yet, but I like to stream whenever I can. This shameless plug, by the way, is made a little more relevant because over the last month, I've been playing through The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the first time in a few years. And yeah, I 100 percent it from launch day and came back for the DLC, but replaying it was an incredibly enlightening experience. Not least because I recently sang the game's praises when I ranked every Zelda game from worst to best. It's far from a perfect game and actually has a lot of little issues, but with a sequel touted for next year, hopefully, Nintendo have the perfect opportunity to make some changes and possibly make Breath of the Wild 2 even better. So yeah, I might be a little late on this one, but with a sequel coming out soon, I'm going to go over what I think are some of the weaker areas of one of the best Zelda games ever made and how they can be tweaked and fixed moving forward. And the best improvement you can make with your internet security moving forward would be to look into a VPN and luckily, you don't have to look too far because because this video is sponsored by the fine people over at Surfshark. VPNs like Surfshark let you connect to servers across the globe with Surfshark in particular, having over 3,200 servers spread across over 95 countries so you can access international streaming libraries and watch, say, Japanese Netflix and watch all the anime you can possibly handle. You can just drown in anime. Plus, I should mention that there's some more serious applications since online security is more important than ever these days and Surfshark can help secure your data with industry-leading measures by using uncrackable encryption and the best VPN protocols around so you can join public Wi-Fi safe in the knowledge that your personal data is being kept nice and safe. Surfshark is super easy to install and can run on unlimited devices from a single subscription so you can safely do all your interneting on a massive number of different platforms and with a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven live custom support, that's like a ton of good stuff. You can go to surfshark.dills forward slash rabbitluigi and enter the promo code rabbitluigi for 83% off and three extra months for free. That link is also in this video's description if you really don't fancy typing all of that out. Secure your connection now with Surfshark. Anyway, I guess it's time to criticize like one of the best games I've played in the last decade. One of the most immediately apparent issues to me when I replayed Breath of the Wild recently is the lack of enemy variety. Sure, they come in different flavors and colors, but if we're talking actual enemy species, then you're looking at 12 different enemies, including the style variants and three different types of overworld bosses. Even the actual boss fights in Breath of the Wild are mostly the same kind of blight creatures, with some Sheikah variants thrown in for good measure. I may well be walking into a trap here, but compared with other Zelda games, there's a very low amount of enemy variants, and considering this franchise's history of jamming every game full of a wild assortment of things that can kill you, Breath of the Wild does end up feeling a little bit lacking in this regard. Luckily, it's incredibly easy to fix, even more so since most of the work has already been done by previous games. It depends a lot on the direction that Breath of the Wild 2 wants to go in, but if it has a lot of underground cave networks like people seem to think it will, then Zelda has a massive rogues gallery of creepy monsters that like to hide in the darkness. Seriously, you're telling me that you wouldn't want Reededs or Poes or Skulltulas to make a return in some dimly lit underground cave? Or if there's all this sky going on that is practically confirmed by the only other trailer we've had for this game, we've got all sorts of aerial enemies that should shake up the currently very shallow monster pool. Bosses are another problem entirely, but as long as Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't fall into the same trap of remixing Ganon for half the fights, then we should be okay. Though I do find it a little strange that Breath of the Wild drew from classic enemies like Lionels and Hinoxes for its overworld obstacles, but really didn't want to dip into some of its classic bosses like Goma or, you know, I'd love to see Breath of the Wild 2 find a way of realizing something like Dig Dogger in 3D. Yeah, how about Gleok with all its weird dragon heads? I've never said no to a dragon in Zelda before, I'm not going to start now. My recent stint playing through Breath of the Wild again was done with a special caveat because I wanted to replicate the feeling of playing the game for the first time, and being a little overwhelmed. The rules were as follows. Master mode, which comes with stronger enemy variants and their regenerating health. No increasing your hearts under any circumstances, so no heart containers or yellow hearts from food. And you can't equip any armor of any kind, which all added together to become basically a way of being one shot by virtually everything in the game. It was also my first time playing master mode for any sustained period of time, and it let me see how the DLC difficulty mode stacks up. Um, I kinda hate it. Primarily the health regen on enemies, which is 100% guaranteed not something that the game was designed around. Certain enemy types are completely different propositions of health regen. Boss fights are stupid bullshit, where any invulnerable phase leads to a huge amount of health gain back, and Guardians have the whole charging malaise animation, which, yeah, that means health regen too, and there's fuck all you can do about it. 
My proposition is for Master Mode or whatever kind of extra hard mode ends up going into Breath of the Wild 2 to replace this kind of stupid fucking health regen with literally anything else. Now I'm no game designer, so I'm not sure what you'd do instead, but previous hard modes in Zelda games have simply doubled the damage you take, which would be a pretty damn good idea considering how easy it is in Breath of the Wild to become overhealthed, I guess. Introducing gold variants of enemies was a move in the right direction since they will technically hit you for more damage, but why not make things even harder and punish players for making mistakes as opposed to having to sit through an animation? Or just design a game around possibly having a hard mode in the future? Is that too much to ask for? One of the most prominent new things to Breath of the Wild, something that you encounter basically everywhere you go in the game, are the ancient shrines. The way it was sold to me when they were first revealed is that they're like smaller dungeons. Obviously you can't expect them to be too complex since there's 120 of them in the game, but it's an attempt to move Zelda towards a more casual puzzle solving experience, something you can pick up and solve in a few minutes, and then either carry on exploring Hyrule or put your Switch down to get on with life. This kind of modular game design is justifiable because of how big the open world is and you can still get tons of shrines under your belt without having to explore every inch of Hyrule basically the same philosophy as the 900 Korok Seeds. However, the Korok Seeds are like teeny tiny puzzles that are dotted throughout an overworld, whereas the Shrines are a bit more important and therefore, as they are right now, a bit too repetitive. Repetitive and underdesigned, if I'm being truthful. Yeah, there's about a dozen or so shrines that are really well made and stack up well when compared to any series of rooms from any previous Zelda game, but that's not a great strike rate. You can't be counting on maybe a fifth of all the shrines in the game actually being worth your time because that does leave a lot of other shrines that barely feel like they had any effort put into them. 20 out of 120 total shrines in the game are tests of strengths of various difficulties and after a while you do start to hate seeing them. The solution could be any number of different ideas, but most of the ones being thrown around in discussions lower the shrine count down by a lot and focus on quality rather than repetitive quantity. Bring 120 down to even 30 or 40 and the developers can put so much more time into each shrine and we'd be far more likely to have more good shrines than bad ones. Currently, I'm not so sure. However, in what might be starting to sound like a bit of a trend, a lot of people have suggested that Breath of the Wild 2 could benefit from a return to more traditional Zelda dungeons, which can now do a madness with puzzles given that we can expect the sequel to have an equally entertaining physics engine. Breath of the Wild 1 did of course have the Divine Beasts, which were like slightly beefier shrines with a modifiable structure, and are the closest thing that this game has to dungeons, but I still think they struggle when compared to the very best Zelda dungeons. You could have fun with it, maybe there could be like 8 or 9 dungeons throughout the overworld with some of them being mandatory, but a few being optional and it would still fit the idea of a shrine just more Zelda-like, you know? Isn't that the reason why we're here in the first place? If you look through any review of Breath of the Wild written in 2017 when the game first came out, you'll likely be reading through the same kind of praises and equally very similar types of criticisms. Across the board, while the gameplay was loved for giving the player so many options for solving problems, the story came under fire for being a little bit too passive. It's not a terrible story by any means, but it suffers from being little more than background set dressing to an open world sandbox kind of game. It helps to contextualize a lot of what you're doing and gives you an overarching reason to go to places and eventually defeat Ganon, but it doesn't link back to moment to moment gameplay very often or very well. You're gonna hate me for this, but compared with other Zelda games and really a lot of other games that strike a more satisfying balance between gameplay and story, there's a complete lack of urgency to Breath of the Wild story. I get that that's the whole point, and if you're designing this playground to screw around in, it'd be jarring being told that you have to go somewhere right now. But there is this hilarious disconnect between the task you're given as soon as you leave the Great Plateau, and the freedom you have to just fucking ignore it completely. It's easy to get the sense that the story doesn't matter in Breath of the Wild, and when so much effort has been put into the world of Hyrule to give it a sense of a lived-in history of violent conflict and massive destruction, it can have some serious tonal problems. Oh no! The land of Hyrule was lost to Ganon's force- Yeah, I can surf on my shield in this game, it's so cool! So the solution I have is fairly simple, and from the trailers it seems like we're going this way anyway, and that is to have a more urgent story. 
Saving Zelda and Hyrule when they've been locked together against Ganon in a stalemate for a hundred years isn't as pressing an issue as potentially waking up crispy Ganon and Zelda being lost beneath Hyrule somewhere. You don't need to do so much, but it'd be nice if the freely open world vibes better with a story that is a lot more immediate and requires you to actually pay attention to it. Also, I'd kind of like it if Breath of the Wild 2's overworld evolves with the story. The most we get in the first game is the Divine Beast lasers shooting across half the world, and I suppose the Yiga Clan turning up to fight you once you've seen off Koga, but I want drastic changes to the world to go with story beats. I want to know that the story is so important that it actively changes how I play around in the overworld. If you were to raise Hyrule Castle off the ground, then maybe we can raise other parts of the world, or sink some into the depths below? Really, you're only limited by your imagination. If you're getting a little sick and tired of my recommendations for Breath of the Wild 2 basically boiling down to, oh yeah, just make it like the older Zelda games, then you're in luck because I want to close out this video by talking about an aspect of Breath of the Wild that doesn't really have an equivalent in any other Zelda game. I was going to talk about cooking and how there should be some kind of cookbook in the game so you don't have to memorize recipes, but I think the bigger, far juicier fish to fry is the can of worms that is weapon durability. Easily the most controversial part of Breath of the Wild of opinions being fairly split, but also mostly falling on the side of, oh my god it's disgusting, get it out of my video game. All weapons, be they spears or bows or swords or shields, they all degrade through use and ultimately break when their durability runs out. The only exception is the Master Sword because we can't break that until possibly the sequel, so it just works on a cooldown timer. The point of this is that you don't become too reliant on any one weapon, and given that you can use and keep basically any weapon that any enemy may have been using before you killed them, this kind of system was necessary so you don't go around declining every weapon drop because your inventory is so full of the good shit. I actually like it and think that Nintendo were onto something here and when you're roaming around the Great Plateau, living off the land and hitting enemies with sticks that break in a few hits, it's all very convincing. The way I see it, there are two main problems here, the first being that there is absolutely zero way to repair a damaged weapon, and the second being that it doesn't scale properly in the end game. You'll have some strong sword that can finally put some damage onto stronger enemy variants and it'll be busted before you can kill them. I especially noticed this when playing master mode because health regen effectively means that those hits and subsequent weapon degradation were a complete waste and that's just not very well balanced at all. I personally don't want to bin it entirely because I think there's a good system in there somewhere, but if Nintendo choose to keep it for Breath of the Wild 2, it needs to be so much better. Even if the hypothetical repair shop is kind of expensive, just give me something that I can do that mitigates all this weapon degradation. Fix it, and it's a perfect game. Those are pretty much my main complaints of Breath of the Wild, and if Nintendo were looking for areas to fix for the sequel, these should be where they start. Our knowledge of the sequel at time of writing is severely limited, and given that Breath of the Wild 2 has theoretically had roughly the same dev time as the first game, there is every chance that the sequel is going in a completely different direction, one that makes all these recommendations a little redundant. Also, it could get delayed again, in which point we're just kind of spitballing ideas again. Until the day it comes out, I can dream and wish for an even better Zelda game. What would you improve about Breath of the Wild? Make sure to let me know in a comment down below, and if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more in the future, and hit that bell for notifications of every new video. If you need something to watch right now, I recently made a video that ranked every Kingdom Hearts game from worst to best, and I also want to thank my top supporters on Patreon, including Sarah Malion, The Green Scorpion, and Scott Riker. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.